Thanks to a technological revolution, power once concentrated in the hands of a professional few has been redistributed into the hands of the amateur many, Glenn Reynolds, an army of Davids. Let me start this story on the night of September 8, 2004. Dan Rather, reporting for 60 minutes, broadcast a story that was supposed to upend the presidential race. He was revealing documents never before seen about President George W. Bush's military service. But only a few hours after that story was broadcast, a user by the name of Buckhead, writing for a site called Free Republic, decided to question the authenticity of those documents. Meanwhile, the next day's newspapers, New York Times, Washington Post, and USA Today, all ran stories echoing CBS's original report. When I arrived at work the next morning at cnsnews.com, my editor handed me the stack of documents, which were made available on CBS's website, and asked if I noticed anything that was questionable about them. I said I didn't, and he said, take a look at the font. I said, well, sure, it looks like Times New Roman. There's just one problem. Times New Roman wouldn't have been typed on a typewriter like the IBM Selectric in the 1970s. So my first instinct, having married a graphic designer, was to call up some typography experts, figuring they would be able to get to the bottom of the story and tell me if this was a real story or whether it was something that uh, we shouldn't worry about. Sure enough, at the same time, bloggers, those influencers that you hear about so often at Little Green Footballs and Powerline in particular, were comparing the original documents from CBS to creations that they themselves had made on their own computer. I figured other reporters would be soon filing so stories as well, and so I'd better be on the case. Within a few hours, after talking to three typographers, independent, without any political ax to grind, I found that they too had questions about those documents and said that it was worthwhile to question CBS about them. They all agreed there was little chance that they were created in the 1970s. Well, here's where the story gets fun. Within just minutes of me posting that story, it was the top link on the Drudge Report. I didn't really understand the impact that that would have, but instantly my phone started ringing off the hook, calls about questioning me about my story and others examining whether or not the CBS story was real or not. I sent it to a, a source at the Republican National Committee. He dismissed it as wishful thinking. He told me that Bush was in big trouble over this one. A few hours later, I was on Fox News. It was a remarkable moment that changed my life, also one that changed Dan Rather's. David had challenged Goliath. In just a span of a few hours, the influencers showed how they could transform a story and topple one of the news' new, uh, news's legendary icons. The story, bounced around blogs, was picked up by ABC News. Dan Rather continued to deny it, attributing stories like mine to partisan political operatives. I know that that story is true, he said. By this point, however, the tide had already started to turn. Those papers that a day earlier ran with CBS's story now began to question the documents themselves. The New York Times, Washington Post, and USA Today all ran headlines with questions about whether or not the story was true. Finally, CBS was on the defensive. One executive dismissed the work of the fact-checking bloggers in their pajamas. CBS News started to backtrack. Within two weeks, they had formed an independent review panel to investigate. By March, Dan Rather was out of a job at the CBS Evening News. And to this day, he says that he stands by those documents. He believes that they're not forgeries. Now, no story, I think, better illustrates how ordinary Americans can be influencers. Using the tools of digital media, they can provide a check on the powerful and hold them accountable in media or government. We've seen it happen again and again. Here are two examples on the left, how bloggers, just using tools that are available to any one of you in this room, can have an impact. Virtually anyone can be an influencer today. We see people doing it with 140 characters on Twitter, among their friends on Facebook, providing commentaries on YouTube. And they're getting results. A few years ago, a team of bloggers on the left and the right came together to lobby Congress to pass a government transparency measure. President Bush signed it into law without a single help of any high-paid K Street lobbyist. Now, ignore these influencers at your own peril. The army of Davids are using, big mar using markets and technology to beat big media, big government, and other Goliaths. Anyone today can influence the influencers. So read them. 
engage with them. Take them seriously. One thing is for sure, they're not going away. Thank you.